we underestimate sometimes how important that familiarity is to some of our best officers doing their jobs. And then the other key point I want to point out, I want to emphasize is I think we have a problem with recruiting. I think for you know, far too many neighborhoods and communities in our city, when they see a police officer's name, it's a stranger. It's an other coming into their community and telling them what to do. And they don't know how to handle that. They don't trust that. They don't know how to react to that. And I think we need to refocus our efforts on how we recruit officers. I think it's a big difference for somebody when that person walking down the street looks like them, when they may have the same religion as them, maybe they're wearing a headscarf just like they do, maybe they're speaking their language, maybe they're from their culture. Because then it immediately stops being, who is this strange person who's coming into my community and telling me what to do? And it becomes, look, there's another member of my neighborhood who's here helping to protect us and helping to make this city a better place. And I think when we start with those couple of key things, we begin to reduce some of the problems we're having in our police department. And back to one that we had before. Do you support paid sick days for all workers in Seattle? And if you do, how will you fight for that? I, I do support basically, and uh, I know one of the, the issues they talk about is small business and how it affects small business. But you know, when we talk about uh, paid sick leave, and I see it as a health issue, uh, I always ask, you know, not really cost, but what is it worth to have healthy families and healthy employees? And I think for any business to have healthy employees, which means healthy families, is a good thing. So I support it. But I also understand that, uh, and I work in economic development, that we have small businesses and the challenge to small businesses. When people talk about small businesses, I think uh, they tend to forget that there are different types of small businesses. You know, by SBA standards, I think small businesses like $7 million. But the reality that most small businesses are what we call micro and mini businesses. They're two, three, four, five, maybe a family. And, uh, and it's difficult for them to implement uh, something like this just based on the margins. But what I hear when I talk to people is the majority of Seattle businesses are providing some form of paid sick leave I think maybe 60%, 50, 60%. And so the, the question is, we'd like to see it for everyone, but we've got to move up that continuum. We have to make sure that uh, in many cases, people who don't have paid sick leave there restaurant business, their service people, um, and when they lose a day of work without pay, if you can imagine losing 10, 20% of your check for that week, I mean, that's what it means to folks. And in many cases, retribution if they don't show up to work. And so they're working a very difficult balance. Um, in one of my past jobs at uh, the city of Seattle, I was a safety and health director. So I knew very closely what it meant to have uh, my workers that they were safe, that they were healthy, and uh, when they weren't healthy, they couldn't come to work. They needed to stay home. I was a flight attendant until all my little jobs. Now, you can imagine being sick on a plane with 300 people. You know, you weren't allowed to come to work. So I know that value. But then I think the thing that connects me the most is I know that in many cases, these sick days mean a family member, a guardian, a mother being able to take care of a child. Because usually that's where it really comes down to, in most cases, not the individual, but a family member or a loved one that they're taking care of. So uh, in terms of fighting for it, I am 100% in support of it. And as elected, I will work with the fellow council members to do whatever is necessary to ensure that we have a safe and a healthy community.
stay at home. It's the ability to take care of your children. It's the ability to go to work every day, knowing that you're healthy. And when you're not, you can stay and know that you're not only taking care of yourself, but you're taking care of the general public. I think that the most recent iteration of the plan that uh, was announced yesterday is also a good version because it's addressed a lot of the issues that people have in the restaurant industry. I own parts of two bars, and one of the biggest concerns we had is making sure that there was recognition for ship swapping. Because what happens is, oftentimes, workers won't just take a day off and not in bars or restaurants. They'll switch with another employee because the way they make most of their money is with tips. And so it's critical that they still have the ship swapping, but yet the businesses get credit for that. But what I'm critically concerned about in executing the paid sick leave is I still think there needs to be consideration for how this impacts small and medium-sized businesses. A year and a half ago, uh, one of our bars was actually at a point where it had no more cash. And we were looking for places to actually reach out for credit because the impacts of what's happened in the recession were getting so far. What I'm concerned about is if those businesses have to set aside more money and either go under or cut employment, I don't know if that's a net gain for our community. If nine employees have paid sick leave, but a tenth employee has to be laid off to get that, I don't know if that benefits our community. I'm also concerned at the power cuts. I talked with uh, the director of operations at Linda Durshane's restaurants, which operate in Capitol Hill and Ballard. And he said in their bakery, because they always have to ensure that someone is going to be there, they'll suddenly cut from three employees at 40 hours down to four employees at 32 hours. So while I want to see this executed, I think when I'm on, if I'm elected to council, one of the critical components analyzing this from the perspective of business, getting support from central staff to say, this worked in 2006 in San Francisco during a boom time when real estate was moving quickly through the economy. But in 2011 in Seattle, how can we best address this? The current iteration of the proposal is great because it allows new businesses two years to catch up before they have to start providing paid sick leave. But what other considerations do we have to assure to make sure that employees stay employed. The number one social justice issue to me in this economic recovery is creating jobs. Because people need jobs and Seattle needs to get back to work. I think there's no question that paid sick leave, it's a family issue, it's a human rights issue, it's a social justice issue. And frankly, I, I think we need to push a little hard on businesses on this one. It's clear when you have good employees, when you treat your employees right, you get that respect back, you get better service, you get better work out of your employees. And the kinds of arguments we hear against paid sick leave, the same kinds of arguments that were given against minimum wage laws, given against health benefits, given against all the sorts of things that a lot of us now take advantage and we just assume that's part of having a job. Um, I, I'm honored that we have owners of full small businesses like Cupcake Royale, stand up and say this is an important issue for them because they care about taking care of their workers. They want to give them sick leave. And I'm a little concerned. I'll tell a story. You know, Sally was prob probably there when this was brought up, I assume. Um, there was a business owner who spoke at the public hearing that the city council had about this early on, who basically said something along the lines of, well, you know, if this gets implemented, the first sunny day after a you know, long Seattle winter, all my employees are and a bunch of us, when we heard that, we were sort of paying attention you know, from online, from, from not in the chambers, and kind of thought, well, you know, if that's what your employees would do, I think you have a bigger problem with your employees and whether or not they're sick of you. And so for me, there's no question. I'm 100% in favor of this because I think good employees, healthy families, are what build strong small businesses, which what build our economy and help us get out of the economic crisis we're in. And if government needs to step in and give cover to make sure that all businesses will do it, it allows those good, strong business owners who take good care of their employees to do what's right without feeling like they're going to be put out competitively by the owners who maybe need a little bit of an extra push.
I'm so very, very proud of the fact that those people who are a coalition, who are uh, backing this, have sat down with <clears throat> a lot of the small business owners, and they have come up with a compromise plan. It's not the San Francisco plan. It's not the Washington, D.C. plan. But it is a Seattle plan. And it is probably going to go through some discussion before we get the details worked out properly. But the details that I've seen on the latest compromise look to me like this is one of these issues that we're going to be able to say that we all won on this. That the uh, small business owners uh, voiced their concerns. And actually, even today in my office, somebody from the grocery industry was in talking about their concern. They're a little bit concerned about the fact that their, their union contracts do not mesh sufficiently with some of the provisions of the proposed, that this is just a draft. We're hoping that you all will come in and tell us what you think about it as well. We need citizen help with this. We need citizens to look at it and see whether it makes sense to them. But certainly it does not make sense to me to be spreading diseases by having people come to work who are sick. It isn't good for them and it certainly isn't good for the community. And I back it 100%. Please give the candidates for position one a good round of applause. We now have the opportunity to endorse if you so desire. And I'm going to turn this part of the meeting over to our parliamentarian.